He was he was the normal way of scoring the line was with four more. But basically, if you use this, you know, you have to output so you know, you need to choose a score. It has to be the score of, of, of the, the, the pairwise alignments. In the global case, you know, if all, all pairwise alignments score, uh, you know, uh, 10 or higher, so your cutoff should be uh, 5 doesn't make a difference because everybody, everything will go 5, so your cutoff should be somewhere uh, in between the lower score and the highest score, and then you do something with the cutoff, right? So if you put it higher than the, uh, the highest score, then you find nothing. So, and, and even there, it would be good if not to think about something that is a scheme that you don't need to think about. You need to use the cutoff and the drugs and the contesting. We didn't know how to do it. Nobody knows how to do it. So that's why it's is more a toolkit. But to use it, you set the purpose. And also, very often, you need to play a little bit. Then if you see, so we have visualization tools that view what you're doing. And that's how far away it is. So it's just a but you have a view to tell. That comes step after the So why did you take it? The next trick you use, to check this, but you have been selling now. This is what we use, is we reuse. We have an input set, we only use the interface for the input set. We, 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 we uh, squeeze potentiality to get our input. The next step is using this, but then you look at the red sidelines, you have a set of input set, which is the value that gives you the red sidelines, and there are uh, more than in that way. So instead of saying, oh, you're really alive with all these extra hundred sequences, we say, no, we use the way to say that this. We use those sequences in the data. We look at them. And that's yeah. what we do for you. But that comes after the show. But so, you know, there are all kinds of things. And I must say, it was nice to be thinking about those breaking algorithms. We even have a bit of a battle with all these things. You know, you're talking, well, you know, what should do that? Yeah. 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 
sequences as an actual input for the alignment of each pair of sequences, you know, um, alleviating a little bit of the problems that, that, that the, uh, the uh, progressive protocol carries. Um, we've done pre-processing praline using information from the other sequences. You represent each sequence using a hypersausage, a pre-profile, forget about the original sequences make the alignment based upon all of these profiles. And you can do that using global information or local information. We didn't get to building in the combination 
you know, we've been dreaming of combining tea, coffee, and praline, and so on. I leave that to you guys. You want to come do a project? Be my guest. I would love to see that. Uh, okay, so next step. In fact, going on from the using the local information in, in pre-processing the pralines, we take one further step, and that is the realization that, you know, if you have 10 input sequences, biologist comes to you and says, I have these 10 sequences, I love them. Can you make an alignment of them? And you think, uh, hold on, you know, 10 sequences, okay, if you want 10 sequences, align to 10 sequences. Let's run cyberlast for each of those 10 sequences, see what happens. Maybe you find that in the database, there are 500 homologous sequences of your, of the first sequences of the 10, and maybe 70 of the second, and so on. So then you say, you know what, you know, I won't tell the biologist, I just pretend that I do work on the 10 sequences, but behind the screen, somewhere hidden, I use the 100 sequences of the sequence one and the 70 sequence two. How do we do this? In the way of pre-processing. So basically what we do is, and it's, it's a very simple protocol. I go back to, uh, to the pre-profile slide. And there's this one that I'm not sure about whether it helps you or confuses you more, but anyway, okay. Um, Tell me if the majority says this is, this is ridiculous. Then, well, make something else, I promise. OK. Um, anyway, so far we have here five sequences as input. Uh, we use, we massage the information out of these five sequences, do everything with these five sequences. Now we say, ooh, don't tell the biologist, but for each of the sequences I run side blast, I find not the four sequences that I use here, I find maybe 100 sequences in a database. I use just in this way the information from those hundred sequences. They will be part of the pre-alignment. And another set of sequences uh, found by Psyblast might be entered here. So we make master-slave alignments of each of these key sequences using database sequences identified by Psyblast. Yeah? Might be hundred here, fifty there, who knows? From that we just make a pre-profile and we say, look, this is now a description of my sequences. Behind the screen, I have the information, all the other sequences in it. But the, and, and then you do just like normal. So just pre the only difference is, instead of taking the information under each of the sequences, of the key sequences in the block here, you use just the other sequences in the set, the five sequences that the biologist takes, gives you, now we run cyberlast and take all the sequences. It might be that these sequences are part in the cyberlast run, it's even likely that you find it because they're homologous, that's the idea. If you make an alignment, you use homologous sequences. So Cyblast, in a way, ought to find the other sequences as well. But maybe it finds many more sequences for each of the books. You use it, okay? And you just stick it in here, you run this, you run this, and you have your multiple alignment. And here at the very end, you, 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 you know, you're not telling the real truth to the biologist. Then you say, you gave me five sequences. Here is the alignment of the five sequences. Behind the screen, you used hundreds of sequences. Okay, so that's basically the idea. Now I'll have to go on a lot. I hate this. Okay, now we're getting there. Where was I? Here. Okay, so that, that's basically the trick. Should I tell you more? Well, I'll give you an example of what happens. Let's do this first. Here. Example tells more, sorry, a thousand words. Give you an example. These are, these are two sequences we used, as an, and there were many like this. It's not the, the one uh, pairwise alignment that worked, you know. It's a typical case, although one of the more positive ones, but there are many like that still. So here is a reference alignment. This is a database with sequences of a biologist say, this is the true alignment. Doesn't matter. Now, we run using all kinds of technologies. Whatever they do, probably basic. Ali Kaus and other fantastic muscle is program I've mentioned to you. T Coffee, you see, fantastic program. So this is a pairwise alignment. And if you look, this is how it should be. Look here, big, big at the start. This is the reference here. Which alignment is only doing this? You see this flap here. You see that? No, 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 no. Yes. You see that. So I'll show you a curve. This is the curve, pairwise alignments, many pairwise alignments. We did the statistics. How does it help in the pairwise alignments? We have uh, a, 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 a box standard reference, and here we say how much are these alignments improved using each of these tricks. Here you have it, and this is this praline, psi praline, we called it later on. 
cutting based on the running side blast that you see from, and this is the distance of the alignment. These are very distant sequences. And these are similar sequences here. And you see where does it help? It doesn't help so much for very near sequences, but you don't need the help. That's an easy case. For the difficult cases, when sequences become distant, you see that relatively the help of this trick is, is really large. So using homologous information, that's the main message, optimizes alignment. Yeah. Use, the more information you can get from homology, the better it is. That's the basic point. So this is at the pairwise stage. At later stages through the tree, it's, uh, you know, Progressive alignment, so this is larger blocks, the multiple alignment stage, you see there's still help, but it's a little bit less pronounced. This is a higher peak as you can see from this, but the message is it also consistency improves alignment quality. Okay? So there was a, uh, how fast is this? Ah, very slow. You know why have you ever run side blast already? Did you do that? How long does it take you? In the server, two minutes. <coughs> now you want an alignment of 500 sequences? 500 times a few minutes. Mm. Yeah. So that's, that's the, scale, the, scale, uh, the scaling of the algorithm. It's slow. But it works. So that's uh, another trick. Now we go to the, the last, and then I'll go into the last bit of, the, of this, this lecture. And that's really about what does it mean and how good is it? Right? And how can we tell whether something is good or not? And uh, OK, so last trick first. <coughs> 